and especially on this slave liberator. He's a hero of whom we are commemorating today, Jean-Jacques Dessalines. And I'm here with my cousin Arlene, who we share the same bloodline of Jean-Jacques Dessalines, who's our mm. great, 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 great grandfather. Oh my God. We are not prisoners of history. History is neither static, but for world history. Now, as actors, we are undoing in a concrete and tangible way centuries of silences, erasures, banalization, trivialization of our history. Yes, they've been trying to erase our history. Now with the street honing, tens of thousands will walk through the street in central Brooklyn and see and utter the name of Jean-Jacques de Sally. Many will be dis Many will be encouraged to learn about him, his compatriots, and their accomplishments, like Toussaint Louverture, and Petron, and Jamaican Dutty Bookman, and Grenadian Henry Christophe. And many will read and study the description of the Haitian Revolution and that of Jean-Jacques de Salines contained in the official New York City local law in relation to the Jean-Jacques de Salines Boulevard. Now, as narrators, as narrators, we get to define the narrative. No longer will the Haitian Revolution be a fluke and historical accident or a non-event. No longer will Jean-Jacques de Salines be disregarded or portrayed merely as a tyrant. As the official New York City local law states, significant to world history, the Haitian Revolution is not only the first and only successful slave re revolution in America, but also resulted in the Haiti being the first Latin American country and second in the Western Hemisphere to declare its independence. Right after, right after the United States declared its exactly independence from Britain in 1776. Furthermore, the Haitian Revolution was inspirational and gave support to the enslaved and subjugated peoples throughout the world. More significantly, the Haitian Revolution was truly a transcultural event, joining three interlocking and intersectional 18th century struggles, which continue to reverberate to the present. The challenge to imperial European authority, the fight for racial equality, and the movement to end slavery. Jean-Jacques de Salines took charge of the Haitian Revolution and brought it to its successful conclusion. He had the vision and forethought to see the freedom would be secured by defeating the French Imperial Army in the field. And hero to all those who cherish liberty and freedom. In words and deed, de Salines exemplified his love of freedom. So in 1804, in declaring the independence, these are some of the words of Jean-Jacques de Sally. Citizens, it is not enough to have expelled the barbarians who have bloodied our land for two centuries. It is not enough to have restrained those ever-evolving factions that one after another mocked the spectrum to a poor. In the end, we must live independent or die. And so he ends with this. Remember, I sacrificed everything to rally to your defense. Family, children, fortune. And now I am rich only with your liberty. My name has become a horror to all those who want slavery. Depots and tyrants curse the day that I was born. Therefore, vow before me to live free and independent and to perform death to anything that will try to place you back in chains. Swear, finally, to pursue forever the traitors and enemies of your independence. Independence or death. May these sacred words bind us and be the signal for battle in our reunion. Done at the headquarters in Gonaive, the first day of January, 1804.
the glorious occasion. And a special thanks to Council Member Jamani Williams because he's the lead sponsor and he brought this bill before the council. And everything is political. Everything is political. And this was not something that was done in the usual manner and passed with ease. It was a battle, it was a fight, it was a struggle, but those who understand the significance of not letting other people determine who's important to our history wage that battle. Woo! And we were successful, and that's why we're here today. Thank you. Right. So that we respect more than Desalee. That's right. He handled the business the right way. <laughs> that's right. As a Black Panther, you know I love him. That's right. <laughs> so I wanted to say on this day, as we sit here in little Haiti, America, this street renaming or co-naming is a signal for you to pay Haiti their reparations. That's right. That's right. Pay Haiti their reparations. You That's told right. Haiti. That's right. And France, how dare you have Haiti pay you reparations. Uh -huh. right? You mess with us, we will desolene you today. <laughs> Florida want to debate that, but I still claim it. <laughs> Let me thank uh, Assemblywoman Rodney Schatz. Let me thank Councilmember Jamani Williams, Councilwoman Inez Barron, and Assemblyman uh, Charles Barron. I know that we are also joined here by our borough president, President Eric Adams, and all those who labor to bring this very historic day to Central Brooklyn. I identify 100% with this corner. When I think about the struggles of an enslaved people, I think about the revolution in Haiti. Because that set the standard for human dignity and liberation. And that liberation liberated the minds of millions around the world who were enslaved but saw hope in what Haiti had produced through desolation. And so I want to thank our assemblywoman who has traced her bloodline as I try to trace my understand that the revolution continues, that our human dignity is under assault today. And when we look at what Donald Trump is wreaking on our nation, this should be a rallying call. This corner should light up the globe about what we need to do in unity to liberate our people right here in Brooklyn and across this nation. Right now, we know that Haitian Americans are being challenged with their temporary protected status as a result of having the likes of Donald Trump and those amongst us who need to be able to continue to be here with their families and with their communities. And today, we say thank you to Desalin for his courage, his dedication, his valor, and his ultimate sacrifice so that we could stand here today as a benchmark in the history of Brooklyn to say that we will not ever surrender our humanity to those who would oppress and enslave us. And that stands for 1804 and it stands for 2018. So thank you once again, Assemblywoman, your passion for highlighting the Haitian American community reverberates from here to Capitol Hill. <laughs> and we are very proud of the leadership that we arrived at this moment. Uh, it was so fitting. And I believe that I'm excited about the opportunity to participate in pulling this sign to reveal uh, such a powerful street name. And, and when you do a combination of what Assemblywoman Barron stated, it really resonates with all of us. We're at the time where we must define our story and not their history. It is absence of some of the most significant moments that we've had in history. If they can celebrate their freedom fighters, we must be at a place in our lives when we can truly lift up our freedom fighters. And when you do a historical review of history, you realize that we cannot celebrate the same people they celebrated because their celebration will cause us indignation. Our celebration is different. This is so important. And I cannot even capture the emotion of Assemblywoman Bishad to turn back the time in history to reflect on her ancestry. 
And now, over 200 years later, to stand here in Brooklyn, the Port-au-Prince of America, the capital of the Haitian community right here on Newkirk and Rogers Avenue to reveal a sign that will allow us to stop <coughs> and pause and say, who was that? And now on the tongues of all Brooklynites and everyone who passed through here, those who are long-term and those who came after Starbucks came, they will all realize that this is Little Haiti and the leadership is here. Thank you, Thank sister. Thank you. All right. Little Haiti BK, along with Regine Goumet, who is the executive director of the Haitian Cultural Exchange. <coughs> Unfortunately, she could not be here, but uh, you know, our hearts are with her. Um, just to tell you a little bit about HabNet, which I am also the president uh, of this organization, uh, it's, a, it's, a great, uh, it's a great opportunity to be here, sharing this time with all of you to recognize the co naming of uh, Rogers Avenue to just like this out in Little Haiti. And I just want to, again, I know we've heard this before, but I really want to thank the people who make this possible. Um, uh, Council Member Jumani Williams, who really spearheaded this at the City Council. Uh, Speaker Corey Johnson, um, Council Member um, uh, Barron, um, uh, Laura Combo. Uh, we just we thank these people so much. And all the elected officials we have around Brooklyn who support uh, this endeavor. Um, lastly, I just want to say this. We are going to accomplish our mission. The mission of Little Haiti PK is to really uh, preserve the institutions within Little Haiti. We want to showcase the institutions within Little Haiti. Uh, we want to harness the institutions within Little Haiti. And lastly, we want to celebrate the institutions within Little Haiti. Institutions going through. Her sponsor, co-sponsor of the legislation, we have with us New York City Majority Leader, Lori Combo. Shot certainly carries the energy and the power and the force and the might of Haitian people because it was that energy that allowed this to pass through legislation in the New York City Council. She is a strong, dynamic, and powerful woman who absolutely does not accept no for an answer, <laughs> does not accept next year, does not accept some other time, does not accept maybe we should re-meet again. She wants it done now. And so I am so proud of her because so often we allow so many other people to tell our stories. As gentrification continues to take root in our community, it's important that we set standards, that we set landmarks, that we push back by staking a claim in our communities. These street co-namings are almost the equivalent of, of placing your flag in a neighborhood. So we have placed the Haitian flag in this neighborhood today for people here, for people in the future to always know that this is a Haitian community, that this is a Caribbean community where people have staked their claim and made sure that their existence lasts not only now, but for generations to come. It is now our duty to make sure that we tell our young people of the history. When they look up at our street co-namings all over the city of New York, we have done tremendous work to re-educate our young people about their history. So I thank you so very much. You've done an extraordinary job. And let me tell you something, for this sister and her community, this street co-naming is just the beginning. Yes. <laughs> she has huge plans for little Haiti. And it doesn't begin, doesn't end with the street co-naming. There is so much more in terms of economics, in terms of housing, in terms yes. of small businesses, in terms of educational resources, in terms of curriculum that this sister is bringing forth to make sure that all people know of the great story and the power and the triumph of the people of Haiti that have resonated all over this country. I love you and I support love you. you too. Thank you so much. Mayor and my favorite sister, Wadnes Bichat, Assemblywoman. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. And my Congresswoman, Yvette Clark. That's right, yes. And I cannot talk about uh, my brother right here and my sister. The Baron the people united. can never be defeated. It can never be defeated. So thank you and enjoy a great celebration.